I just don't really have a clear idea of what I'm looking at here. This apparently is the main gear turbo. Now it says in my document that this is supposed to be a small form factor gaming PC, but this is an awfully big box. And when I pick the thing up, it is shockingly heavy for the size, even being the size that it is. Ugh. Do a little openy open and see how it goes. Oh, interesting. We've got a box within a box. Holy crap, what is in it? Well, one thing that's not in it for sure is a setup guide and accessories. Oh, why indestructible sticker? Why? No, I don't want a knife. Thank you, you're welcome. Thanks, Sean and Carson, for quality assuring this computer. Oh my God. If these are actual pictures of this machine, this thing is gonna be sick. Important stuff. Okay, extra modular cables, Wi-Fi antenna, extra screws. Yep, that is important stuff. Oh wow, that's great. Not only do they include the parts you need if you wanna upgrade your system, they even have an anti-static wrist strap. Ooh, and a mouse pad. I'm not sure what you're saying here, Main Gear. Are you saying that it's for professional gaming or that you're just pro gaming? Like, you know, you're not anti-gaming. Hard to say. It's possible that I lied, Brandon. I would like a knife. Oh my goodness, it's so heavy. This has gotta be one of the highest density computers I have ever opened and, well, there's your problem. It's not full of computer parts. It's just full of metal. That's why it's so heavy. And it really is actually small. Wow, neat. Smells like, smells like paint shop, which makes sense because it is a main gear. Don't worry, that smell goes away and then it's just left looking all sleek, automotive finishy. Oh. Not bad, main gear. Not bad. That is a pretty darn fine paint job. Now, apparently this is their own chassis design. So it's got an aluminum outer shell and it is server grade steel for the interior and wow. Let's go ahead and figure out how to get this panel off so we can poke around at it a little. So this top one comes off. That gives access to the dual 120 millimeter radiator on the top. I, it's not obvious to me how to get the side panel off though. Instructions, Brandon, see, I figured it out. Instructions, you think so little of me? These gold bits power fittings look absolutely incredible. Now this system, so this is the main gear turbo, starts at $1,500. For this configuration, which has four terabytes of NVMe storage, it's got 12 processing cores, so it's a 3900 XT, I believe, processor in there, so that's the new slightly faster 3900X. It's got a 2080 Ti RTX graphics up the wazoo, and I think it's got like it's either 32 or 64 gigs of RAM, and apparently there's a hard drive hidden away in here somewhere. Western Digital red 10 terabyte hard drive back there. It's a 750 watt SFX power supply. It's gonna run you, I don't know, about $6,500. But hey, 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 it's got full hardline liquid cooling. What do you want from me? You can't put a price tag on full hardline liquid cooling. Well, you can. Yeah. It's $6,500, <laughs> okay? RGB logo in the front. If the imagery on the website is anything to go by, we're definitely gonna try that out in a sweet minute here. And cable management, I would say that's a good solid B plus. It's tight, but it's not really especially hidden. Um, they are using individually sleeved wires for the power supply. So that does look 
pretty nice. And honestly, from the like the the business side, I, I would say it's more like an more like an A. You really can't even see any of the cables because of the way they've got the graphics card sitting on this PCI Express riser over here, kind of blocking most of the, the ugly parts of the motherboard. And then they've got this like crazy town reservoir here. And they've actually got some kind of additive in the coolant that's, uh, I guess, is it just a black dye? Because it gives it kind of like a blue uh, look around the, the fringes here. I, I mean, should we fire it up now? 100%. I think it's time to fire it up. Okay. Before I turn it on though, I need to turn you guys on with one of my classic segues. Govi sponsored this video to tell you guys about their dream color LED lights. They use their RGBIC technology to get vivid colors on their light strips, and the lights can sync with both music and game audio, offering an immersive audiovisual experience. They're compatible with Google Assistant, Alexa, and the Govi Home app, and you can follow Govi on Facebook or Instagram to enter for a chance to win one of their RGBIC light strips. Main Gear knows they're like not getting this back, right? Do you think they know that? All right, you can hear the air bubbles working their way out of the system. Um, they would have been kind of shuffled around during shipping a little bit. Holy sh Nikes. Is this really? Yup, it is. So the radiator, instead of just, you know, straight run down here to a right angle fitting in over here, they have actually got this whole acrylic piece right here that takes the outputs from the radiator and brings them over so they can both come straight over the motherboard into the reservoir here. That is freaking unreal. Also, did I say dual 120 millimeter fans for the front? Cause these are clearly 140 millimeter fans. That's my bad. And I was a little worried about just dual 120 millimeter fans having enough cooling capability for a system of this caliber because I'm actually having some issues with my machine, which is a similar size and similar spec actually, and also water cooled. Is this in and then out? Oh yeah, hold on, okay. So I think I've got some idea of what the flow is. So it goes in here, swoop de swoop, out here, in here, out here, and then in here, out here. So note the whole thing is serial, not parallel, as far as I can tell. I took advantage of my lunch to throw the panels back on so we can get a realistic look at how this cooling system performs in a real world heavy load. So this is Doom Eternal running at 1440p, ultra nightmare details. And I gotta say, I am pretty impressed. The fan ramps up a little bit when we're loading levels. So it seems like their fan curve may be tied into CPU load or CPU temps, but then while gaming, you can barely hear it. it, settles right in. That is what custom water cooling will do for you. You won't necessarily get better temps with a solution like this. Remember, this is a small form factor machine, but you can definitely expect a better combination of temps and noise. So we are looking at anywhere from 200 to 250 frames per second. Do I need to remind you guys, this is at ultra nightmare settings? That's crazy town. Oh, did, did they just, did, did, I hate those guys so much. And I tell you, I have used a lot of sick gaming rigs in my day, but this is right up there. Not just in terms of the performance, which is great, but in terms of the experience, it is so quiet. Like that's crazy. Let's see what the temps are like though. Yeah, so like I said, temps, yeah, don't necessarily expect the best. We are up around 85 degrees, but of course we could turn those fans up higher if we wanted to get better temperatures at the expense of some of this quiet operation. Our GPU, on the other hand, I have pretty good expectations for. Yep, sitting around 60 degrees, despite again, Doom Eternal, Ultra Nightmare, 1440p. Ultra Nightmare, all the way. Freaking crazy. Oh. That is some warm air blowing out of the top there. If it was me, I'd probably tune it to be a little bit louder and ramp those fans up a little bit sooner. But if I was gonna use this machine, I'd be using it in my living room where it wouldn't be right next to me. If it was right next to me, this 
is a great experience, even if it does mean that water is running pretty warm. Let's take a look at what kind of pre-installed junk they've got on here. All this stuff I'm moving to the right is stuff that I put on it. So basically just AMD Ryzen Master, which is a tuning utility. Actually, this would work with Onesimus's, um, I forget what he changed the name to, but it's like a, an auto overclocking utility. You need to have Ryzen Master to run it anyway. So it's probably something you'd install, especially if you wanted to use that. We've also got Aura so that we can adjust our RGB. Ah, yes, I did promise there was RGB in here. So right now, I'll apply. Is it rainbowing now? Nice. Yeah? That looks sick. I think that might look even better if you're into like tacky, gaudy rainbow all over the place, which I might be. I'm gonna make it faster. Oh yeah. Oh, this thing is so cool. Clearances are so tight. Like, can you see how this fitting is resting on the top of the graphics card block? No wonder they had it packed in two boxes. Other than that, just GeForce Experience, which I don't know, you can hate me for it all you want, but I actually kind of like. There's really not much else for me to say at this point. This is a sick machine, basically bloatware free. It looks great. The performance of the cooling system is absolutely fantastic. And as long as you've got a cool multiple thousands of dollars burning a hole in your pocket, then I recommend this instead of a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. If you have a more human budget, then, um, well, you can always, you know, watch this channel and watch us check out cool stuff like this and live vicariously through us. That, that's, that's another alternative. Make sure you're subscribed. Definitely not cheap.